What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It, ashsaidit.com, ashsaidit.com. Welcome back to the show, you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you for downloading our podcast. Yes, 250,000 streams worldwide and counting. So we continue to grow and it is a movement. It's not a joke. It's not a joke anymore, all right? And you never know who may stop through to the show. You never know who I'm going to snatch up through and out the city. Today, we have the multi-talented television radio MC, the wonderfully talented Miss Mara Davis. Mara, how are you? Ash, that is amazing. What an amazing <laughs> intro. Thank you so much. And maybe you should say a quarter million. That's a quarter. not fancy. That, than 250K. It does. It does. And I, I tend to kind of switch it up, you know. you know, A quarter of a million, <laughs> 250,000, you know. It depends on what, what I'm feeling for the day, Mara. <laughs> I love that. And I love that. I love how now in life, it's like, you have to say billionaire instead Basically. of billionaire. Yeah, it's, it's as easy. if, you know, that's billion isn't enough. Anyway, congratulations on all of this on your our pod, oh, podcast. It's fantastic. Definitely. Thank you. And, you know, we've got a lot to talk about with you, Mara. You know, you're this huge personality in and throughout the city and in and throughout the world and really world renowned. But for people that wow. are that are not familiar with you, Mara, let everyone know where are you from? Where do you originally represent? So I grew up in South Florida, and I went to college in Boston, and that's really where I got my radio career started. Gotcha, gotcha. So South Florida is really like where, where my mom lives still. I mean, that, but but I really feel like now I'm from Atlanta because I've lived here for over 20 years, so this is definitely my hometown. I think we've snatched you up. I think that you're an AT alien. We're just going to claim you. I love it here. <laughs> I love the A. Love it. All right. So as a child, Mara, what were your childhood aspirations? What did you want to be when you grew up? Well, I was always fascinated with radio. That was a big part of, of just, you know, you got to remember it's like pre-internet, pre-any mm-hmm. of that stuff. And I was really fascinated with MTV, mm-hmm. music. And I was always listening to my brother's record collection, and I was always attracted to the radio. Mm. So, and there were a lot of shows that I listened to that I loved, like Rock Over London and American Top 40 and things like that. So I think I knew I wanted to get in some sort of entertainment or marketing or advertising. So that was really the goal when I was going into college, that I really wanted to be in communication somehow. Okay, cool. So as you're in college and you're getting ready to graduate and you're starting to get these offers and all these options are around you, what was your mindset as far as landing your first gig? Well, it was really interesting turn of events. Uh, So I had interned in radio all through college. I'd worked in college Mm -hmm. radio and I think you're very green and you think everything's going to come about college radio. And as great as college radio was, I had a lot of challenges there. I mean, I even had a professor who told me that I should probably switch majors because radio, uh, I may not be cut out for that, which is one of those great like stories of, you know, you can't, you know, let people get you down. And if you you got to pursue your dream and and I did. And, And once I kind of felt, that it wasn't really happening so much in college radio. I got college internships. And what resulted from that is that I ended up getting a job as a receptionist at the radio station I worked at, WZOU, which was a top 40 station. Mm. And from there, that's really where I cut my teeth in radio. So I wouldn't say I had offers at that time, but it was like I graduated high, I graduated college on Sunday and I had a job on Monday being a receptionist. Wow. And from there I did promotions and voiceovers and ultimately that's what led me to being on the air. It was being fired from that job. Mm. You know, sometimes you, you have to look back at things like sometimes being fired or not getting something mm-hmm. can be the best thing that ever happened in your career. Yeah. So when I ended up two years later, I got fired due to a budget cut and from that, the guy that fired me, his brother hired me at a radio station in Rochester, New York. And that is really what started my radio career. Gotcha, gotcha. So did you encounter any challenges as being this, 
you know, you've got this this big, this this live personality, and, you know, you're also female. So what challenges did you face being a female in the industry? You definitely have to work harder. There's no question about it. Yeah. And anybody who tells you that that's, that's, that's a mess is, mm-hmm. is just not the female in the workplace. <laughs> I, I even think it's more challenging in the radio industry because it's extremely sexist. Yeah. Uh, it, I mean, look at it now. I mean, if you could... You couldn't count five women talk show hosts mm. on radio. You just couldn't. Yeah. You're like, okay, let me let me think about that. Dr. Laura, Laura mm. Ingram, mm. uh, uh, uh. <laughs> just, they don't exist. Yeah. There aren't females that lead morning shows. If you think of any morning show that you know, there's never like the girl's name first. Mm. There are no females. Uh, that are leading a morning show, I, I think it, it's, especially the radio industry, it is not as progressive as, as, as film or television. Yeah. And yes, you do have to work harder. There's there's no question. I mean, I don't think I was a victim of like, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I was, you know, it's so hard to say, like g- giving examples, but like I think early on in my career, I was passed over. Um, because I was a woman. Mm. Um, so I do think, but I do think it's, you know, you have to go into it with a different attitude. You have to work harder. You have to be better. And you can't let your emotions show. And if you don't give up, you'll make it happen. Okay. Okay. Now, you've had just a host of interviews of Hollywood stars, all kinds of singers, all kinds of chefs and everybody else in, in in between the industry. So everyone, you you've talked to a lot of different personalities, a lot of different people. Which interview can you think of right now was one that had you a little bit nervous before? Oh wow, there have been so <laughs> many that I've been nervous for. Really? Uh, it's 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 yeah, you. So many. I mean, I think Conan O'Brien was one I was ner- nervous for because I'm such a huge, mm, huge fan. Yeah. Um, I I also think that you know early on in my career, I got to interview Howard Stern, who is really my hero, yes. he is my broadcasting hero, and I still have that reel to reel tape of that, and, and that was so nerve wracking. And he was the nicest, nicest guy ever. Um, but, you know, there's just so many. I think you always have a little bit of nerves when you're going into an interview. But yeah. if you're prepared for an interview, you'd be just fine. Yeah. So, but, uh, but, but, yeah, I mean, I, I always, I get asked that a lot. I feel like I should have an answer for that of, of what I was really nervous for. I think it's, it is, it can be nerve wracking when you do the Q&As on stage in front of a lot of people. But yeah. I, I get less nervous for it when I'm, so researched and prepared, right. um, it, it's okay. But I'll tell you the interview that surprised me the most and that I'm most proud of right now is my interview with Adele mm, um, because yeah. I feel like I'm one of the few people that has a like such a general Q&A with her because I was able to get her before she blew up. Right. Um, so, so I'm really proud of that. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that was a good one. Another one that, that's a favorite of mine is, oh, that, that ever so debonair Bradley Cooper. Mm. Did he smell as good as he looked? <laughs> that one I was nervous for. But he couldn't have been nicer. Oh. He had no entourage. And this was before he was really the A-list star that he was. I mean, he was right. definitely like a great, well-known actor yeah. and, 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 and notable at the time. But it was to promote The Hangover, which was not the worldwide sensation that it became. Right. And he was fantastic i mean i even say if you look at it on youtube i say to him i'm like this is the last time i'm ever going to have this kind of access to you and he was like oh no 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 and it's so true it's like there is no way he'd ever remember (laughs) that or but he couldn't have been but yes as far as i remember he smelled great i remember there was a point in that interview that was so funny my producer at the time elizabeth Mm -hmm. was she had to go in the lobby and like bring him in and she he was so Ashley was so beautiful. Like, you know, you see just a man or a woman, and they're just yeah. like a beautiful specimen of human yes. being. And he was just 
so incredibly gorgeous and tall. And, <laughs> and then just, and she came in the studio bringing him in, and she had like red, she had like red, like her face was like splotchy <laughs> and red, and she was all nervous. It was, it was, but you know, I wasn't nervous with him because he was, it was like talking to an old friend. Yeah. He couldn't have been nicer. A really, really great guy. And, and I believe that even with all his success, he has not changed. And he's still that down to earth guy yeah. that I met, you know, so many years ago. Absolutely. I think that that works a lot when you're talking to people and they treat you as if you're a human being, you know, and vice versa, you know. So is that that commonality factor that comes into play. And you guys can just talk and just chill. It's here. Well, I also think it's it's a thing when you're doing a media tour or you're pro, you're going out there promoting something. It is I think you can look at it two ways. Mm-hmm. It is hard when you're an actor and you're going on a press tour and you're talking to a hundred outlets mm-hmm. and people are asking you the, the same, same question over and over and over mm-hmm. again. And there are a lot of people actually that don't do their homework, that don't do the research, yeah. that that are looking for and who knows what they're looking for but if you can go into an interview and find a way to connect with somebody even if it's just on one thing you could really make a difference and make it memorable and i do think with the younger generation of 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 actors or, or musicians who are going out and doing these media tours they don't hustle as hard as some of the older people because you know, they expect, oh, like, oh, I have a, a million followers on Instagram. Of course everybody loves me. And, and no. you got to work hard you gotta uh, to get your, keep yourself in it, yes. You absolutely have to. you got to put that work in. And you've been putting the work in in all these favorite eateries around the A-Town. And, of course, you're highlighting them on Atlanta Eats, Peachtree TV. Uh, <laughs> let our audience know, um, what is an upcoming episode looking like for Atlanta Eats? Well, we just filmed at Lady Bird Grove and Mess Hall, which is a really fun place on the Beltline. Mm -hmm. And we did a show there. Uh, I think that's going to air soon. So you'll definitely see that. And what I love about that place, it's a great place, number one, to go day drinking, if that's your thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Because they have an incredible patio. I think it's a little hot now, but uh, if you like the heat, it's great. In the fall, I think it's incredible. It's kind of got a campfire theme, and Mm -hmm. it's a great spot for shareable plates because they do a lot of these boards where they have the meat and cheese or they'll do, like, wings or barbecue. So I think that's a really good spot, and you'll see that soon on the Lenny. Okay, cool beans. And, of course, we love you every Thursday on The Bird Show. You know, you give your commentary. (laughs) We, We love that. So is there any Thank chance you. is there any chance, Mara, that maybe you're creating maybe a another medium source book project thingy majiggy to where you can give a lot more insight on the different like I mean I love when you when you specify like I think this week was was it seafood? You were talking something about oysters and be careful I, not to do cheap. I did seafood. bar food. Well, I try to do something different every week for the bird show. By the way, that is just the most fun. Thank you for saying that. I love being on with that group. When I started being on the bird show, it was just kind of an experiment. And I can't even believe I've been there over a year now. And wow. and, and sometimes I'm like, even if my schedule's crazy and I'm like, I can't make it this week. I think they want to cancel on me and I'm cool with that. And they're like, no, 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 you have to come in. And, and it, just so much fun and what I've gotten out of that experience the most is I think one thing that you have to remember when you're getting in media or the entertainment industry is to you always have to be reintroducing yourself to yeah. people and I do do a lot of stuff as you mentioned I do Atlanta Eats and I do uh, radio for the Bird Show and I'm also on NPR in Atlanta WABC and I do behind the scenes stuff but with the Bird Show it's opened me up to so many new people, people who may not have known me from my mm-hmm. years at G93 or Dave FM or even Atlanta East. They're mm-hmm. just learning who I am from the Bird Show, and I get so much feedback from that audience. And I genuinely say, like, if you need a recommendation, reach out on my social mm-hmm. media, media, and I will get back to you. I will engage with you. Mm-hmm. And it's really opened a lot of doors. So it's it's just so great you know you can never stop it's just i always say it's like a game show every time you watch 
the price is right, they tell you how the game works every single time, yeah. even if you've seen it a million times. Like Jeopardy, they tell you how it works oh, every time. I mean, same thing with career. Like you can never, you can never really forget where you know who you are, where you came from. And I, it's just, it's a real honor to get to do that stuff all the time. It, so I'm excited yeah. for it. And I have a cool behind the scenes job uh, now that I work with Adult Swim, the cartoon network, and that's like a completely different thing. So it's, you know, as far as a book, I would love to write a book. I really would. Uh, and I would really want to write a book more about what you were talking about, females in the radio industry. Mm. But it's a slippery slope because I've been given so many gifts and my radio career has launched the, all the other stuff that I'm doing right now right. that I don't want to come off as a bitter Betty, right. <laughs> you know, um, but I do have a lot to say about the industry currently because um, there are some things that are super great, like the Burt Show and Atlanta Eats Radio and what I do with WAB, but there's a lot of stuff that, yeah. that is, is a real bummer. And I, I, I think because I would love to be doing uh, terrestrial radio talk show along the lines of what your your great podcast is, yeah. you know, interviewing people. And, and then I think podcast is a great way to do that. And so cheers to you for keeping it going. Thank you so much, Mara. Mara Davis, you guys. Mara, last but certainly not least, what advice would you offer to any young person now, we'll say even specifically, any young females now that, that is listening to our voices, listening to us talk and conversate back and forth, what advice would you offer to them as far as entering the world of radio? <laughs> Make another career. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of not kidding, Ashley. Oh Radio's not a place. Uh, I'm really sorry to say that. Yeah, but, but it's, it's true. It's, and, it's and very I would, difficult. I would say that. I would say that to anyone, male or female, because this is not an industry right now that is embracing young talent. I think it's fine to get in there and cut your teeth, but I think what you're doing along the lines of podcasting and technology is really the way to go. Mm -hmm. I think radio is just, it's, it's not, they're not nurturing young talent. So mm -hmm. I would say to someone who wants to be a broadcaster, right. I would focus on writing and I would focus on video as opposed to audio. Um, right. And if you, if you do want to focus on broadcasting, my advice would be to go along the lines of public radio because that is an area where they're nurturing young talent. Okay. And you have to go into it where it's not about the money, but if you want to be a broadcaster uh, and you want to do news, public radio is where it's at. But I just see fewer and fewer opportunities in terrestrial radio for mm -hmm. anybody. And they, and they, you just, there's no money in it. And, um, I'm really sorry. Like, I hate that yeah. I say that, but it, no, but that, that's, that's, that's true. And that's, that is coming straight from you. And basically what I'm hearing from you is really people in general, not even just young people need to be multifaceted. You need to have Agreed. more than one thing going for you. Just, oh, well, I want to do radio. Okay, but what else are you doing? <laughs> what else are you trying well, to do? Well, that's definitely true. And that was a hard lesson for me when I got out of radio full time. Because yeah. it was like, a, that was all I ever did, Ashley. And then suddenly it was like, oh my gosh, well, what am I going to do now? And you do have to diversify. And maybe radio can be one aspect of what your career is. Right. But I would say as far as looking... I'm I am very discouraged in the yeah. industry right now, um, as far as the options for female talent on terrestrial radio. Yeah. And, and 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 it's the people who say satellite radio and satellite radio is amazing and I love it. I, I listen to it all the time, but there's very few opportunities for people there. I mean, if it's your dream, I right. would say to anybody, yeah, gotta go for it. Go for it hard. Be an intern. Soak it all in. Get the experience. You can't lose but with any career. An internship is the way to go. Yeah. You should do that in radio. But sadly, even in radio, the internship programs are dwindling. Like, I know. And I don't know if this has changed, but I know at iHeart Media in Atlanta, they don't have an internship program anymore. I wouldn't be surprised. It's, 
is so sad. I know Cumulus does because when I'm at the Burt Show, I see interns, and I think it's great experience for those people to do that, but that's just one facet of media. So my advice would be exactly along the lines of what you said, and that is diversify, diversify, diversify. Absolutely. Mara Davis, thank you so very much for passing through the Ash Senate Daily Podcast Show. I appreciate you so much. <laughs> well, congratulations in your success and your quarter million downloads and listens. That's amazing. And thank I you, hope I can you. push you to 251,000. <laughs> hey, we're going we're gonna to get it. The takeover is happening, Mara. It's happening. Oh. Well, I, I congr- congratulations on your success. And, thank and, you. Um, and, and keep on keeping people inspired. It's great what you're doing. Absolutely. And Mara, let everyone know the best way they can get in contact with you or, and if they want to keep up to with everything that you're doing. Yeah, uh, follow me on Twitter at Mara Davis, Instagram Mara Davis 2000. And listen, I'm always about a mentoring program or mentoring someone. You can always email me Mara at MaraDavis.com because one thing I've learned in my career is you always got to take that call. You always got to answer that email. You never know what road that's going to lead you to. And it's important to always network and always be nice. Absolutely. Appreciate that. Thank you guys for tuning into the show. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for all that you do and all your support, all your love. I tell you guys all the time and I continue to say it. Anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me. Just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. Because this is what it's all about. Social media is cool. It's nice. It's fun. It's helpful. But real life is happening right now. I'll talk to you guys later.